when you're trying to describe an ecosystem, which we're going to be talking about soon, you have to talk about two areas of this ecosystem because in ecosystem ecology, you have two aspects, the living aspects and the non-living aspects. And you're interested in how the living aspects talk to each other and how the life also interacts with the non-living aspects. So the living aspects are called biotic factors, bio for life, so biotic factors. So here you see, for example, you can see lots of life in these ecosystems. Of course, you can, if you look carefully, you also see things which are not living, like on the water, for example, is not alive, or the air is not alive, so the ground. But the biotic factors are all the living things. And, it, and believe it or not, they make a huge difference. What makes the ecosystem is not just the environment around it, but also what's in it. The living things that are living in it actually change the ecosystem. So, for example, a good way of looking at that is thinking of keystone species. Keystone species, I think of it as the key. They are the key in the ecosystem. The stone that holds the whole structure together. Now, believe it or not, there are some examples of this in nature. That if you were to remove that single species, the entire ecosystem would change. A perfect example of this is the elephants in the savannah. All right? So you see in savannah, you see this big grassland in Africa. And you say, like, oh, awesome. If you remove the elephants, trees will start to grow more often in the savannah. And possibly, the savannah might turn into a tropical dry forest. But if you have a tropical dry forest and all of a sudden you put a bunch of elephants there, if they might level the forest and make it into a savanna. So believe it or not, some areas, the savanna is preserved by the elephant because the elephants basically knock down the trees. And so that's an example of a keystone species. Another good example of this is the sea urchin and the sea otter. Together, they're keystone species for some aquatic ecosystems. The sea otter eats sea urchins, which are these things you see on the top left. They're like spiky things. They're like related to sea stars. They're echinoderms. Now, these sea urchins eat a lot of the kelp, which are like algae. Now, if you have a lot of these sea urchins, then the kelp doesn't really grow that much. You know, they, the numbers stay down. But if you eat the sea urchins a lot, then the kelp starts growing like crazy. And if the kelp grows like crazy, it changes the entire ecosystem. All right? So since the sea urchin's primary predator is the otter, if you were to kill off the otter or remove the otter from the ecosystem, the sea urchins will suddenly blow out of proportion, which lowers the amount of kelp and changes the ecosystem. But if you have a lot of, 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 of sea otters, the, the urchin numbers go down and then the kelp numbers go up. So what ecosystem shows up depends on the numbers of otters. You see how I'm saying? They're key for that ecosystem. So there's perfect examples of keystone species. So here you see how the numbers of sea urchins make the huge difference. For example, if you have an ecosystem and you remove, if you have both the urchins and the limpets present, now this is an experiment that's being done here, all right? Look what happens with the amount of seaweed or the kelp, all right? The numbers stay really, really low. If we remove the limpets, which are these sh uh, shell-looking things, the numbers don't make that much difference. So, like, they don't make that much difference in the ecosystem. The sea urchins will eat whatever the, the limpets were. Uh, they'll, be, they'll just have more food, and the sea urchins will keep eating, so the number of seaweed will stay low. But if you remove the urchins, look what happens. All of a sudden, the numbers uh, of seaweed grow like, up like crazy. And, if, of course, if you move the limpets on top of that, it will be even worse. The numbers will go even more higher. Uh, it will grow a lot. By the way, notice that there's a maximum number of seaweed that can grow because after a while, you know, the seaweed just takes over and uh, the fact that it's overpopulating the, the, the aquatic ecosystem actually hurts the ecosystem, so it can't grow more than that. It reaches what we call the carrying capacity. And we'll learn more about that when we do population ecology. But notice how this is showing you how the urchin is, is, makes much more of impact than any other species that eats that kelp, which is why the otters also matter, and together they're a keystone species. All right, so this is a, an example, again, of experimental biology that's been done to actually prove uh, the, the role of them as keystone species. Another good example of biotic factors are what we call dominant species. Now, dominant species are not the same thing as ketone species. Keystone will change the very nature of the ecosystem if you were to remove them. Dominant species is just the most powerful or most common species in the ecosystem. The Pratt, they are basically either the ones that are more numerous or that they, they have absolutely no competition. 
They are the rulers of the ecosystem. A good example would be the lions in the savanna or the mangrove trees and, and some types of, of swamps near the tropical areas. Uh, estuaries uh, in tropical areas are dominated by mangrove trees. We even call it mangrove swamps because of that. Of course, humans are a great example of dominant species. We are spreading all over the world. On the top left, you see a map of the population density of humans throughout the world. And you see on the bottom there, at night, the lights of the human population civilization around the world. And you can see how widespread the human race has become around the world, especially in the developed areas. And we are definitely changing the world because of it. So we're absolutely the most perfect example of a dominant species. And another example of a dominant species is what we also call invasive species. Species that do not belong in a certain ecosystem, but if they're introduced there, they might affect the ecosystem tremendously. For example, here in Florida, where I uh, teach, uh, a lot of people get their, these pests, these, these huge python snakes, and they have no natural predators in the Florida Everglades uh, system. So when they, they get too big, sometimes people just release them in the wild, and they go out there and they eat even alligators, which were the dominant species before. And since they have no natural predators in, in the, in the uh, ecosystem, they can grow like crazy and dominate very quickly. Very common for invasive species that do not have natural predators and find themselves with plenty of prey to grow like crazy within the ecosystem. So there you go. Dominant species are species that, that have no competitors or that basically uh, control the ecosystem that they live in. Very important biotic factor. You can see humans as an example. Since we dominate over the world, we're absolutely changing the nature of the world because of it. Another example of very important biotic factors are ecosystem engineers, also called foundation species. Now, this is really, really cool. For example, uh, in some uh, types of wooden um, ecosystems, uh, the presence of, of certain trees will actually change the, the ecosystem. They will... They will, they will uh, they will block some of the sunlight. They will, they will, they will make sure that the, the plants that live in the bottom can't live there anymore. So that they will actually change the, the way the ecosystem looks because of it. Likewise, in some estuaries, um, the grass, the, the, the salt grass, will actually dominate the ecosystem. It will slow down the progression of the water. It, it, it will actually desalinate the water as well. It will make sure that the, 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 the salt, it will, it will slow down the erosion it will change the nature of the ecosystem because that is introduced there. So if you put uh, these salt marshes all over the place, it will actually slow down as fa the, the speed of the river, the salinity of, of the area, and even the way the area looks and the kind of animals that can live in it. So that grass actually changes the, even the abiotic factors, like the speed of the river, the salinity, and so forth. Just like the trees change the amount of sunlight that was hitting. Another great example is coral reefs. You see there on sea. They actually create ecosystems because the coral reef creates, um, when they die, they become like this carbon-rich rock. And so they create even islands and reefs. Florida is a coral reef. It was created, it's, it's basically fossilized coral rock. And so the coral reef is basically an ecosystem engineer. That ecosystem didn't even exist if it wasn't for the coral, you know. I got a great example. It is our good friend that cuts down trees, the carpenter of the animal world. Who is it? Beavers. Beavers will cut down trees and literally they will cause natural dams that they create so they create a little habitat for them to live. But that means they will actually change the ecosystem. They'll flood certain areas. They'll stop the water flow to other areas. They will make sure that the, they will actually change the face of the ecosystem. So it's another example of ecosystem engineers. Some ants will actually change the ecosystem as well because they will actually create these burrows or these large ant hills and they will eat every single grass that's in the, in, the, in the area and it will actually change the actual structure of the soil because of, of the, how much they grew. Like you see in E over there, termites will also build, build these mounts. In F, you see this... Um, these crabs that live sometimes near uh, the beach in some places and they will actually create burrows which will change the erosion of the rocks and they will also change the amount of water that goes in and out of the beach and how much water stays in the beach all of this because of their presence so they are changing the nature of that intertidal zone of the ecosystem because of their presence so another example of an important biotic factor foundation species species that literally built the um, structure of the ecosystem 
a little different from keto species. This has to do more with the fact that they actually build the uh, shape of the ecosystem or, or they actually affect the abiotic factors of the of the ecosystem. Keystone species change the ecosystem by messing with other biotic factors. The same, but uh, foundation species mess with the abiotic factors of the ecosystem. And remember, species could do both. Look at humans; they we we, we change both the the uh, structure of, of the ecosystem and the other uh, living things that live in it. And of course, looking at biotic factors too, you can also talk about the relationships that exist between all of these living factors. A perfect way of looking at that is looking at a food web and seeing that all of the living things that are in the ecosystem ha are related to each other. They eat each other so that if you, if, you have some, if you kill someone or someone goes extinct, it will send shockwaves across the entire ecosystem because uh, whoever eats that person will now have no one else to eat. So they might start eating somewhere else and then it will affect everything. We'll talk more about that in the future videos. But as you can see, biotic factors are crucial to understand the way the ecosystems work. There's also abiotic factors in ecosystems. And these are non-living aspects of the ecosystem that make a major difference in what the ecosystem is. The most common abiotic factors include the sunlight, or how much energy from the sun is received. We also have the climate or weather, you know, which is, of course, tied in with that, as long as other factors like, for example, water. How much water is in the surface? How much water falls down as rain? All of these are important things. The presence of gases or other chemicals in the environment like oxygen and carbon dioxide is going to be very important for ecosystems. Also, another, the salinity of the environment it has to do with chemistry as well. How much saltiness is there in the environment? This is going to be important. Of course, a lake is different if it's salty than it is if it's a freshwater lake. The animals living in it is going to be different. Um, the nutrients, the minerals that are in the, eco in the soil will be, will be different. The soil itself will be will, will, is an is a abiotic factor. Is it rocky or not? The rocks are an abiotic factor. Other things that happen, such as natural disasters, including things like lightning and, and uh, storms and, or, or earthquakes or volcanoes, the atmosphere, all of these things are examples of abiotic factors or things that happen in the ecosystem that have nothing to do with anything that's alive, but of course will help determine what kind of life can stay there. And remember that there are some biotic things that can even cause changes to abiotic factors, right? You can, uh, like the, the grass that we talked about that can change, affect the salinity and the flow of the water, or the trees which can affect the amount of sunlight that hits the floor or the beaver that was actually blocking the water and changing the water flow and the crabs which change the erosion and therefore the amount of nutrients which will be available uh, and so forth. So these are great examples of the factors that determine the, the, what the ecosystem will look like. Biotic or abiotic. Biotic are the living ones, abiotic are the non-living ones and together they create the ecosystem. So take a moment to look at these pictures and see if you can spot in them some of the biotic factors and some of the abiotic factors that make up each of these ecosystems. Which of these things are alive? Which of these things are dead? Pause the video, take a look at it, and remember the ecosystem is built both of living things and non-living things that interact with each other and that is what ecology is all about, understanding these relationships.